Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the session this afternoon. My name is Sarah Ansel. I'm the PCC's Chief Finance Officer. Um, and I'm covering Emma Dixon, who's our Finance Commissioning and Grants Officer, was really hoping to be here this afternoon um, because she's done a lot of the legwork um, that sits behind this, but she's, she's unable to. So uh, I'm going to take you all through it. Hopefully, um, it will be an informative session for you all. And if you've got any questions, then obviously we can try and deal with those as we move through it. But thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here today. Hopefully you're going to learn an awful lot more about what the Policing Crime Commissioner's 2526 Prevention and Diversion Grant Fund is all about. So for the benefit I need to bring to your attention, for the benefit of those that are unable to attend today, my colleague Hannah, who's sitting with me here in the room, is going to be recording the presentation and we'll make it publicly available afterwards. So please bear that in mind and to help the afternoon go more seamlessly, if you could put on your, your mute button so that there's no sort of interference and background noise, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you. So, in terms of the agenda, it's set out there on the screen in front of you, and I'm going to hand over now to Philip Seckham, who's the Police and Crime Commissioner, to welcome you all this afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, Philip. Right. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome from, from me and, and our office. I'm really pleased to see so many people on this call, some of whom I recognise, and there's some new faces that I'm also very pleased to see. So this is an important day in, 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 in the life of a, a police and crime commissioner is the launch of the annual grants scheme. Uh, this is a, a really important way of supporting uh, initiatives which will help my, support my ambition to reduce crime, support victims and make all our communities safer. So I want to see applications from a really wide range of community groups or charities or other organisations who've got innovative or proven projects that can make a real difference here, particularly to, to victims of crime, as well as those that, that, that can prevent offences from happening in the first place. So it's really important to proactively engage with our young people as well, providing them with new skills and a safe space away from negative influences and criminal activities. With this in mind, I'm very keen to see applications from projects that work with children and young people come forward. Also want to see applications that can make a real difference in making our roads safer to help reduce deaths and serious injuries on Warwickshire's roads. And finally, I'm also keen to hear from projects that will help us to, to fight crime and indeed to reduce reoffending. So I, over the eight years I've been doing this job, I've seen it firsthand some of the brilliant work that has been going on with the organis organisations and others that do in Warwickshire. And this is my chance to support some of that essential work that does make a big difference to our communities. And I'm often asked when I'm on a public platform about the grant scheme and asked to explain how this helps keep our communities safer, and it is a really important part of that. So I very much look forward to reading and evaluating and deciding on the submissions that you make, and that hopefully that I can work with all of you in, in the future. So I'm now going to pass back to Sarah Ansel, who is my uh, 151 uh, officer, and she will take you through some of the details of the application process of how things work. And I know we'll make room for and time for a question and answer session at the end. So back to you, Sarah. Thanks, Philip. And welcome back, everybody. So I'm going to kick off now in terms of our process and thought it would be helpful to start in terms of understanding the role of the commissioner and what some of his key duties are, which are outlined there on the screen. So first and foremost, I think it is in terms of representing community views, holding the chief constable of the police force to account, setting the police budget, which is something that uh, he and I are going to be working on very closely over the next few weeks and months, 
working with local partners and for the purposes of this presentation this afternoon, commissioning and granting local crime prevention and victim services. And above all of that, and hopefully all of that work will be guided by the work that he does to set the police and crime plan. So following the Police and Crime Commissioner's re-election in early May this year, the new Police and Crime Plan is currently under development. And so the previous plan will remain in place up until the 31st of March 2025. And for any of you that have taken the time to have a look at that Police and Crime Plan, you'll know that that covers the period up until 2025. However, for those of you that attended the partnership event held in September, and hopefully I can see a few familiar faces on the screen uh, of those of you that, that I had the pleasure of meeting at that event. The Commissioner's Police and Crime Plan for his new term of office is currently out for consultation. Uh, and we're doing some of that work with TONIC, which is an independent external organ organisation. But please feel free um, and do provide your val valuable feedback to the consultation. And that can be found on our website or through our social media channels. So the Commissioner's Grant Scheme criteria is always heavily focused around the police and crime plan and its priorities. However, because of that sort of changeover in this transitional period that we're in this year, in terms of the development of a new police and crime plan, our grant criteria has changed very slightly for this year. And we'll obviously be, be walking through all of that later in this presentation. So please bear with us. So in terms of our overarching theme for 25-6, there'll still be a clear focus on prevention and diversion. And outlined on the screen there is really what each of those terms mean and what we expect in terms of that. So prevention involves targeting the causes of criminality and or antisocial behaviour in our communities, but also on our roads as well. So we're seeking, uh, when we look at prevention uh, projects, we're seeking to break the generational cycle of offending to prevent it from occurring in the first place. So that was the sort of, so if your project feels like it's going to fit within that prevention uh, theme, then that one's for you. Diversion, on the other hand, involves the supporting of individu individuals who've already begun a journey of perpetrating crime and or antisocial behaviour again, either in our communities or on our roads. But hopefully, if we can arm them with the right knowledge, understanding and commitment, then they can be diverted from that path uh, towards a more positive uh, future. So again, that's one of our overarching themes that we're looking for as part of our grants process for 25-26. So in terms of the funding themes that we've got, the prevention and diversion overarching themes are divided into four available funding pots, and they're all outlined here on the screen. So we've got crime prevention funds, reducing reoffending fund, children and young people, and then we've got our road safety fund, very much like we've had in previous years. So under the Crime Prevention Fund, all applications for this pot must be for projects and initiatives that take a problem-solving approach to preventing and deterring crime, disorder or antisocial behaviour. And you'll see under each of those, there's then boxes that are where we, you can apply for a small grant, which would cover up to the total of £5,000, or for a standard grant, which would be for above £5,000 up into a maximum of £15,000. The second pot is reducing reoffending, and that's for applications for projects or initiatives that aim to reduce reoffending in Warwickshire. So the project or initiative must support adults, children and or young people who are known to the criminal justice agency. So that may include the police, youth justice or probation. But again, hopefully, if we arm them with the right knowledge and understand, then we can divert them away from committing further offences in the future. Thirdly, children and young people pot. So that's for applications with projects and initiatives that aim to prevent children or young people from ever becoming a victim of crime or from entering the criminal justice system as an offender. And you can see for each of these is that distinguished then between small grants and standard grants. 
The fourth pot is road safety, and that pot is for applications that support the aim of the Warwickshire Road Safety Partnership. And the Commissioner is a key player uh, and partner as part of that road safety partnership. And they have the ambition to reduce the number of people killed or seriously injured on Warwickshire roads by 50% by 2030. So uh, any projects that um, can help to achieve that will be considered under that pot. So I wanted to pull out on this slide a few um, key headlines in terms of our grants process. So all submissions will now be accepted through, will only be accepted through online portal. And we've now using some new software called SUMS um, to help us to hopefully streamline and make that process more seamless for both yourselves, but also for us here in the office. So applications must demonstrate that they meet the funding criteria. So prevention or diversion that we've just outlined and you must apply against those specific pots. So an organisation can submit an unlimited number of applications, and that's a departure from what we've done this year, where only two, a maximum of two applications were possible by an organisation. So the individual maximum grant application is still capped at £15,000, but a single organisation can only receive a maximum of £30,000, but it could be that there are five or six applications that are submitted clearly for smaller sums of money. So as long as you don't breach that £30,000 cap, then, you know, if you've got lots of innovative projects and ideas, then please feel free. And if they fit within our criteria, then please submit applications for each of them individually. Every, each one will be considered on its own individual merit. So not joined up across the across the piece. So the PCC's decision will be final and there's no appeal process as part of the um, grant sort of evaluation process um, that we'll talk through in a little bit more detail as we move forward. So the application process and how to submit an application. So we've tried to make the process more streamlined and all you will need to do is to go onto the official OPCC website and it's live now today. That can be found using the link that's indicated there on the screen. And on that website, you'll be able to find all the grant funding details um, that are included within this uh, presentation, but everything that you should need to know. So it can be accessed through the banner on the carousel that's going across the, the top but it's also accessible through the latest news section. So you should easily be able to see it with on the, OP, on the OPCC website. But if you're having any difficulty with any of this, please get in touch and we'll hopefully be able to help you moving forward. So once you've found where to go, hopefully it's relatively self-explanatory. So in order to submit an application, you'll need to select, as we've just outlined, which funding pot or initiative that you think is most applicable to your uh, project. If you've got any concerns around that in helping to decide which funding pot is the best fit for your project, then please get in touch. But also please have a little look. You'll see that there's a, a, a little section there. Hopefully you can see it on the screen that says download crime prevention fund criteria. Hopefully that will just remind you uh, in terms of what is expected for that particular pot and will help you make your decision. And then you can either apply for a small grant up to £5,000 or a standard grant for up to £15,000. So a small grant, you might, you might ask, why are you distinguishing between those two? Well, we've tried to gear up the performance monitoring to suit the type of grant that, that you're applying for. So a small grant, will, payments will be made for those that are, are awarded the grant and are successful with our application will be made in one instalment. And there will just be a single 12 monthly report that will be required. So hopefully that won't be too onerous for each of you, but it will also enable us to understand the outcomes that have been achieved and, and to assure ourselves that the project has been delivered and provides good value for money for taxpayers. If you apply for a standard grant for up to £15,000, 
the grant payment will be made in two instalments and there'll be a six month and a 12 month report that will be required. So the second instalment <coughs> will only be paid after the satisfactory receipt of a six month return. So that just brings in a little bit more rigour into the process. It's obviously a higher award and we need to make the, the relevant assurances, but we will work with you on that. And hopefully we, there's no intention for any of this to be onerous or difficult. We're trying to make it as simple as possible for each and every one of you. So as you go through the application, hopefully it will be relatively self-explanatory. Once you've selected one of those blue bars, either a small grant or a standard grant, will take you straight through to the application form and, and work through that application process and complete it as fully as you can. And there should be a button down at the bottom. There'll be two buttons down at the bottom, either to save the application or to submit the application. So depending on how you want to work, you can either just do a little bit of the application form, and then if you get pulled away and you need to come back to it, then you can save it, and it should generate a, a link for you or a code that you can then go in at the top and you'll see that retrieve saved form, and you'll be able to put that in. Alternatively, you might want to work through it all and sort of just submit the whole application after working through all of it. It's entirely up to you. Hopefully that will be a lot more user friendly and easier for all of you to follow and work with. And we've tried to respond to some of the feedback that we've had in previous years where you said, you know, how frustrating and how clunky the form is. So hopefully this will make it a lot easier for you. Uh, but again, if you've got any difficulties, please get in touch either with myself or with Emma or indeed comms and engagement team, and we'll certainly be able to help you as best as we can. So I just wanted to go over the evaluation process. So all applications will be evaluated through a four stage process that will involve a number of OPCC staff and different sort of stages, um, an initial sift, um, a detailed uh, evaluation by um, most staff within the OPCC against five different key areas and those key areas are outlined there. They will score all of the um, applications against those criteria. So the first one there is the criteria. So how relevant and to what extent does your application meet the funding criteria that has been outlined? Scanning and analysis is the next key area. So that is how the project and initiative addresses the identified problem and need in Warwickshire. So that will be links back to the police and crime plan, but also the specifics around the project and evidence that you have gathered around um, the need for that project. Response is the extent to which the proposed project is likely to be effective in reducing or resolving the identified problem and need. And clearly, we're, we're really interested in the outcomes that will be achieved from the project. So assessment is the extent to which there's a viable and achievable mechanism in place to capture the relevant information to measure the effects of the project. So that's all about the outcomes, hopefully positive outcomes that you're able to, to generate by undertaking the project. Value for money, so this is something I'm particularly interested in. So it's around the financial evaluation, so the extent to which the project offers good value for money in Warwickshire. So that might be about the number of people you've got um, involved in the project that are benefiting from the project. It's around the benefits realisation too. So the grants process and some key dates for putting in your diaries. So uh, the application window, it's gone live today. So as I say, it should all be available on the website and you should be able to access it. If you're struggling to access it, then please let us know. But as I say, it should be on the carousel. So that sort of flicks through or through the latest news area down at the bottom of the website. And that will take you through as we've outlined. So the application window will close at midnight on Friday, the 29th of November. 
and applications submitted after that date um, will not be accepted. So please make sure that you meet that deadline. So if you saved an application and you, you know, you go away on holiday or something like that during that period, um, please remember to come back and actually submit it. So you should get, once you've sub submitted it, a confirmation email. So again, this is something that we've struggled with through in previous years. So hopefully we've responded to that and you should get a confirmation email. So if you haven't received a confirmation email, then the chances are, are that it hasn't been submitted properly. So please make sure that that's the case and that will be then your reference point and hopefully the assurances that you need that we've received it. So a robust evaluation process will take place. As I say, we've just touched on that. And uh, a number of people and APCC staff will be involved in that through those various four different tiers of evaluation. Um, that process will complete um, over the December and January period. And as we say, the final decision will be made by the PCC. Uh, and with a view to us being able to share the outcomes of your applications uh, before the end of January. So we will try to do that as quickly as we can, but our backstop date is, is the end of January. So please bear that in mind that it's unlikely that you'll get too much information prior to that date in terms of whether your application has been successful or not. So we will aim to pay all of the all of the grants for small grants in April 2020, first instalment of the grants for standard grants in April 2025 for those that have applied under that sort of regime. So obviously we can only make payments if we've received all the documentation that we need, but there will be a dialogue between our office and yourselves in terms of anything that's outstanding during that period from the end of January through to the end of March. So we will be working with those successful recipients during that period to make sure that everything's in place. And it's very much our intention to make those in payments as early as possible. We know how important that is for you to be able to start your projects and, and, and complete them within uh, the 25-26 financial year. So all projects must finish or not all financing for projects provided by the PCC must finish by the 31st of May 2026. So again, that's something that we will work with you, but um, please, that's a really important date. So please bear that in mind when you're planning your project moving forward. So in terms of the eligibility criteria, there are certain conditions that we do apply if you are thinking of applying for funding. And some of you who've received grants in the past will be really well versed in this. Um, but hopefully for those that are new to this and then considering applications, you understand that it's really important. It's public money that we are awarding out to organisations. So there are certain requirements that we need to set, and that includes making sure that organisations are a properly constituted legal entity. Um, ideally, that they have two, at least two years sets of accounts. I know it says three years on, on the screen. If you've got three, that's absolutely great, but at least two years where, where possible. If that is a challenge for anybody or you think, oh my goodness, I can't comply with that. We, you know, we a recently founded organisation, then please get in touch and again and talk to us. You know, we can come to some conclusions um, through our conversation. Um, it's important that the organisation needs to have its own bank account. Um, and that all relevant staff and volunteers that are included in the project will need to be DVS checked. So, and, and the organisation to be able to provide a series of policies and documentation that they work to covering such things as safeguarding, equality, modern anti-modern slavery measures, privacy notices, data protection, information sharing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and of course, insurances need to be in place or relevant insurances need to be in place too. So that feels like an awful lot, but it's part of our due diligence work and we really need to ensure that we're complying with that. So some things are non-negotiable, as I say, in terms of the longevity and the sets of numbers and sets of accounts that you've got in place. I think that's something that we can talk about if that feels like it's an issue for you. 
but you know other things really are non-negotiable and need to be in place and and that's what we would expect it's important that i draw to your intention that failure to comply with any of the above or could render your application in ineligible so please just double check where you're at with that and hopefully that shouldn't be too good an issue for you so there are various things that the PCC will not fund, and I have outlined them there. So I think the, the overriding issue is that projects must contribute to the priorities of the police and crime plan. And the plan that we're talking about is the 2021 to 2025 plan uh, that's currently in place. And projects need to clearly align with the overarching theme of prevention and diversion. So there are some specific issues uh, around vehicles, repairs and maintenance, feedbacks, and I've listed them all there and on the next slide too. But I think the most, those are the two most important issues. And, and I suppose I also want to bring to your attention that projects that don't directly benefit any Warwickshire communities would be ineligible. And we would want to see that projects are being delivered within Warwickshire. So that benefits realisation really does need to be for Warwickshire communities and Warwickshire residents. So again, if you can't fulfil that criteria, then this probably isn't for you. So there's more details on the on the slide there in terms of various costs that that may fall out of that of of what the PCC can fund through the through the grants process. All of those will be on that criteria that I pointed you to earlier in terms of under each funding pot. So it's all available on the website and I would urge you to have a little look at it and make sure that nothing falls within those um, areas. Anything that we consider if we there was a, a, a space on the application form where you have to break down the expenditure um, and clearly we would like as much detail in there as possible and that you can provide. Anything that does fall under that, then certainly we may either have more questions for you or that would be something that we can't fund. So please take a good look at that and, and make sure that you try and avoid any of those costs in your project. So successful applicants and next steps. So once your application has been submitted um, online, and as I say, hopefully then you've got the confirmation email saying thank you. We've received your application and we'll be in touch in due course. Um, then the OPCC, once we've moved through all of the evaluation process, will then award to those successful applications a login through the through the portal and all communication will then be dealt with through that portal. So that will include the grant application outcome letters. It will include all the other following documentation that in fairness, it's detailed on this slide, but I think it might be a little bit information overload at this particular point. And we were obviously that probably feels like an awful long time away because this will be sort of February next year. But we'll manage everything through that and we'll lead you through that process when we get to it. And if that ends up applying to you. So just wanted to touch a little bit so that you knew what you were sort of potentially opening yourself up to in terms of performance and monitoring and what information that we would need moving forwards. So there will be a degree even for the small grants of uh, performance and monitoring and reporting requirements that we expect. So all successful grant applicants um, will be required to complete some sort of reporting back to us. Um, why you might ask, they seem some of them may seem like really small sums of money. So the five grand and the 15 grand um, funding sort of limits aren't uh, targets really. So they are just our maximum sort of levels of funding that is available. But we do need to make sure, as I say, because it is public money, that we need to assure, A, that the project is delivering as we expected, that the benefits and outcomes that we hoped for are being achieved, and that we can make some sort of assessment around the impact and the value for money that the project is offering. So what information do we need from you? So there will be a variety of financial and non-financial information. Um, 
so some of it will be qualitative data as well as quantitative. So by that, quantitative will be around the financial information and any performance metrics and management data. So who you are working with, what their, you know, some of their sort of demographics around those individuals, if you like, uh, and the financial information, but then also some qualitative reporting, uh, which might include case studies um, and some narrative just to bring your project to life uh, for us. So the next step, so in terms of the reporting requirements, just to sort of dwell on those a little bit longer. So reporting template will be shared with you closer to the time and there will be further details in terms of what we expect from you. It will be a six or 12 monthly reporting schedule dependent on whether it's a small grant or a standard grant. So as I say, a small grant will just be 12 monthly reporting. So one report at the end of the project due by the 15th of April, there or thereabouts. For a standard grant, so that's a slightly higher value one, there'll be a six month reporting point and there'll be a 12 month reporting point too. So everything will be dealt with online through the portal and further details will be confirmed on the award and you'll get that login that I've just referred to. And I did just want to um, draw your attention, those that have received grants in the past will be aware, but there are certain terms and conditions that are associated with the, the award that's, that's made. And as I said, all applications and awards are made on the basis that the grant monies will be spent by the end of the financial year and anything not it should actually say 2026 there not 2025 so everything should then be returned any underspending sorry should be returned to the OPCC at the end of the financial year because nothing no funding can be carried forward into the following year so you know that would be subject to another grants round as and when if the commissioner chose to run one there's a little bit there about partner consultation and involvement so we really do we are keen to engage with you um we want to you know it's it's in our interest to make sure that these projects are successful that um they realize the benefits that are outlined within your applications um and we will be looking to visit visit as many grant projects grant funded projects as we can during the course of the year so there may be, we may expect from some grant recipients that they engage and attend any other partnership groups that are relevant to them. But again, I think that's something that we will talk through with you at the particular time. But it's just something for you to be aware of. That's probably all I want to say just for now. And I'm going to hand over to Hannah for, for her just to talk through some of the engagement and publicity and what our offering to you is in terms of those successful projects. So, Hannah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, for those who don't know me, I'm Hannah. Um, I work in the communications team at the Office of the Police and Crime Commissioner. So I've just been asked to talk a little bit about what we would expect from successful grant applicants in regards to publicity and engagement. And what I will say is that all of this will be in the terms and conditions when you apply, and that is all on that same web page where you'll find the application process. Um, so it states in those terms and conditions that there is an expectation that all of our successful grant recipients will be expected to invite the Police and Crime Commissioner to at least two engagement activities annually with at least four weeks notice. What this means really is that they don't have to be big, large, grand events. It could be the start of your project. It could be just a general your initiative that is happening. It would be nice for the commissioner to be able to come along and um, have a presence where possible. And um, it just really helps him to be able to see that brilliant work going on. And as well as that, it helps him to be able to engage with different members of the community. And that is a key part of his work. It's also a nice thing because we want to be able to support you with your work um, and um, help with promotion or influence where we can. So if we haven't heard from you, please do expect us to get in touch to arrange a visit. Um, and then finally, alongside the engagement side of things, there's also information on publicity. I won't go into too much detail on that. We will um, be sending successful applicants a communications pack that will help with a lot of this. But really what, what publicity is around is around including our logo on kind of promotional activity that you might be undertaking as part of your 
um, project or initiative um, that the grant has funded, ideally seeing some of that before if you are including our logo or a quote from us, we'd definitely like to kind of look at that before. What I spoke about before about being expected to be invited to any events you might be hosting to promote your project. And then also there's just an expectation around whether it's as and when required to promote your project. So it might be a press release or a blog or a social media post. And with that, I just want to reassure that that shouldn't give you additional work. I know that everyone's really busy and most of the time it will be us producing something and coming to you for um, help with promotion of that or maybe a quote to include in that. And then also, this isn't officially in your terms and conditions, but I'm going to plug it. It would be really nice for you to follow us on our social media accounts. And that goes kind of both ways. We'd follow you back too, because, again, it's just that kind of back and forth, helping to promote each other's work and the really great things that are happening um, in Warwickshire. Um, so that, that's pretty much all I wanted to touch upon. On the screen, there are a few things that are just worth considering when you submit your grant. And again, I guess that there's a whole number of things that we can do to help you with engagement and publicity. And the more that you kind of work with us and get in touch with the office, the more you can get out of it, really, I think. But yeah, um, as I said, we're going to send out a comms package to successful recipients. Um, so that is um, explain a bit more detail around that. But that, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, Hannah. Brilliant. So that's probably all that Hannah and I and of course the Commissioner wish to specifically say to you. But if you've got any questions, we'll do our best to answer them. So please feel free. Over to you. A virtual hand up. Yes, virtual hand up. Yes, if you can, and we'll try and come to you. Thank you, everyone. If, if you get the people in the thing in the meeting, it ranks the hands. Mm -hmm. I can't see anyone's got a hand raised at the moment. Yeah, I'll see anyone. I'll just look in the chat. Oh, Colin Cartwright's got his hand up. Okay, Colin. Um, Colin when we, Cartwright. Um, com Hello there. When we um, Could complete you say the organisation you're from, Colin, if you don't mind, sorry. I do apologise. Okay, I'm Colin Cartwright. I'm Chair of Warwickshire Neighbourhood Watch, so I'm representing um, Warwickshire Neighbourhood Watch. The question is, when we complete the applications, Will we be able to sort of have a copy of our application electronically that we can refer to on your portal? Yes, I believe that once it's submitted, you get a copy back of the application of what you've submitted. But I will absolutely, Emma is the guru on this, as I say. So I'm sure that it's a yes. Um, you will be able to guess it one way or another, but I'm sure it comes back automatically once you get that confirmation email and you get a link. So if it's any different to that, then I will come back to you definitely. I will come back to all of you. But absolutely, that should be that is one of the planned advantages of this system that we'd hoped for. So I think it's a yes. I don't know. Okay. Right. Good? Well, uh, it appears no one's got any more questions. I'm sure you're 100 percent happy with the process but I would reiterate that the office is here to help it's in uh, our interest and obviously our, our residents communities interest that these projects uh, are, uh, are are put forward and then accepted and, and that we can make the difference we want to make um, I can't promise everybody will get everything it depends on the volume of uh, applications we get but my my view is if if you only need a thousand pounds that's fine very happy to do that if you need ten and a half or eleven and a half, please. It would mean that if you, if that is, is is sufficient for your project, that means we can fund other projects as well. So I would ask you to be realistic on the amount you're bidding for, not just everybody bid for either five or fifteen, because that will severely limit the number of projects that we can help. So I think we've had over fifty of you on the call, which is fantastic. As you've heard, you can all submit more than more than two applications now if, if, if you want to so uh, hopefully we can we can fund those you know the projects that are, are really going to make a difference and are going to be within our financial envelope so thank you very much for joining us i hope that you will find the system uh, easier uh, th th than it has been in the past but i would reiterate the office is here to help with this is not meant to be a high jump or, or a hurdle race for you. This is meant to be an efficient way of us getting the information from you uh, to be able to evaluate the project properly, which I'm sure you would expect us to do. 
So, anybody else got anything here? I don't think so. One last chance if anybody wants to comment or ask any other questions. Good. Well, thank you very much, all of you, for attending, and we look forward to receiving your applications in the uh, in during the next month. I think they close at the end of November, November the 29th. So do do get those ap applications in early, and then we will do our best to evaluate, let you know as soon as possible who, who, who's been successful, and we can move forward and get the projects up and running. So thanks very much, everybody.